If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who take walks at night, what's the scariest thing you've seen? I believe in ghosts, I don't think they are part of the material reality, they aren't real. However they exist inside of your mind, as broken thoughts or something like that, they are ideas. That said, I live a good part of the year on the countryside of Spain, and I like to going to walk in the nights alone in the nature. There's a little house like about two kilometers from my home village that was owned by a man who killed himself with a shotgun in an accident. I like to get drunk alone and walk, in the past I used to smoke too, one specially dark night almost without moon I saw a clear man shadow on the path. I know it was my imagination, however that scared me so much that I refused to continue walking on that path. Elders have similar stories, I know that the knowledge of the story of that house can suggest that kind of events, as I said ghosts are ideas. Nevertheless, I won't use that path at night, ever. I had a peculiar experience walking around the grounds of a local stately home and park. It's a big, beautiful place and if you're walking at night you're unlikely to ever see another soul. One night, as I left my friend's house on my bike, I decided to ride home via the park and pull up at the top of the park's golf course, which is its own wing of the park. As I approached the first tee, riding a path that cut through a 200-foot-ish thicket of woodland in the pitch black, I was hit with an overwhelming stench. I thought nothing of it and kept pushing to the first tee. The smell passed and I gave it no further thought. I took a seat on a bench on the first tee that overlooks my home city, and admired the view, and the immensely clear, starry sky. I popped open my bag and grabbed my rolling supplies to enjoy a cheeky number to accompany my not a care in the world mindset. Important to note I've only had two beers at this point. As I began to roll, I had an eerie feeling I was being watched. I kept looking back over my shoulder though I was unable to see anything through the darkness of the wood thicket behind me. I sped up my roll and had almost completed it when the stench from earlier returned. This time it was so potent it stung my nostrils. I immediately thought gas leak, it was rotten eggs on steroids. Before I could give it a second thought, I hear a little girl giggle from the darkness behind me. I'm now slightly dumbfounded, why would someone bring their clearly very young daughter to the park at 3 am? I called out into the darkness of the woods with a simple hello there, you guys okay? Nothing. Perhaps they'd already moved on? Or had I in fact imagined it? My question was answered quite quickly after. Listening to my gut, telling me there is something slightly strange about all this, I packed my bag back up rather quickly on the off chance I needed to leave suddenly. I stood up and put the bag on my back and called once more into the darkness, the sense of being watched was now to the point of certainty. It made me as uncomfortable as can be, and I'm not typically a fearful individual. I'm 6 feet 3 inches and could handle myself if necessary. The stench was now unbearable to the point I was breathing through my mouth, when suddenly, no more than 10 feet away the little girl's giggle comes back, exactly the same as the last giggle, but this time came directly from the shade of a few trees just to my left. I spun my torch on the location and could see the area was empty, those specific trees were thin and spindly in nature and couldn't hide a person. I scanned the entire wood thicket surrounding me and saw nothing though I still felt there was someone there. I was now terrified and felt frozen to the ground. The smell somehow continued to get progressively worse and I now somehow felt surrounded. The final straw was a sharp tug on my bag. I flung round with my elbow sticking out and made contact with nothing, then in the same motion reached down to scoop my bike off the floor and I fled as fast as it could possibly carry me down the sheer slopes of the first and second holes and didn't stop till I got home. About a mile and a half, two miles away terrifying experience, don't think I've felt fear like it. I've told many a person this tale, and one or two have given me some in return. It would seem there is something active in those woods. Back in high school my buddy and I were walking to another friend's house around midnight. We lived in this tiny ass town and to get to my friend's house we had to walk across a massive field with short grass, about two football fields in length. The far end of the field is backlit by a street. As we are just entering the field we see the shadow of a human figure stand up at the far end of the field. We just think it's our friend coming out to meet us until we see the shadow turn and look directly at us. It then just drops and starts sprinting on all fours directly at us. I mean faster than I've ever seen. I'm shitting myself thinking I must be going crazy and I'm seeing things but my buddy grabs my arm and points telling me to run the fuck away. We both sprint out of the field and across the street as far and as fast as we can possibly go. To this day I have no idea what was chasing us or if I really saw it, but my buddy remembers the exact same details the exact same way. Don't think I can go into fields at night ever again. This is the comment I've been waiting for, I was 12 at the time and my dad and my brother were walking my dog while my mom stayed home to relax. 
It was approaching the beginning of winter so the sun went down at about 6.30 and it was about minus 15 Celsius that night. After a while we came across this green stretch, maybe the size of two football fields? It was kind of like an alley but it had a few picnic tables and it popped out onto another street on the opposite end, it was attached to a bunch of backyards and an actual alley on either side, we figure what the hell and walk down this super dark green space in the snow. We're about a quarter of the way through when we heard this ear splitting screech, it wasn't like someone screaming, this was different. The screech was so unbelievably loud. My dad goes what the hell was that? And about three seconds later we got our answer. This thing ran out of the alley off to the right, we all froze including my dog at the sight of it. The thing was on all fours, small legs at the back to match its front legs, completely pale white, almost as white as the snow on the ground. Black eyes and wide open mouth, no nose. It was only about 20 feet in front of us. It stopped in the middle of the path and lifted its head up in the air, almost like it was smelling the air, then it looked at us, and took off into the alley on the left. They'll never forget the look on my pa's face. My dad is a 6 feet 4 inches, 200 pound airplane mechanic but I could tell what we saw genuinely scared him. When we told my mom she thought we were bullshitting until my dad said they're telling the truth with the most serious look on his face. He still doesn't like to talk about it. Dude one time it was like 4 in the morning at the first place I lived away from my home city, and I couldn't sleep, so I walked down some streets and pathways I had never been through before until I came to a path that had 12 foot hedges on either side that eventually led to a swamp. It was dark and I left my phone at home so no flashlight. No city lights at this point. I went for it, kept walking and I could hear ducks, I was coming up to the swamp. It had a trail that ringed around it. There were benches where you could sit and stare at the bog, all the trees in the swamp were dead and it reeked of bird feces. I kept walking when I found someone sitting straight up on one of the benches in a white sheet, covering everything so you couldn't see their face or body. Legs weren't on the ground, and they were dead still, just sitting there in the white sheet. Normally that wouldn't be that intimidating but at 4 am in the pitch black and completely alone it felt like the start of a horror movie, at first I couldn't tell what it was so I go closer until I realized it was someone under a sheet, I turned around immediately and went straight home to bed. Scared the hell out of me. Aw oh man, I'm gonna get shit for this one, but here goes. A shadow thing we just referred to as the 8 feet tall guy. Gonna keep this short. It was around New Year's in 2000 and I was 18. Had six friends over to hang out since parents were going to be out really late. I lived in the middle of the woods out in the country, in the Midwest. There is a big machine shed about 200 yards away from the house lit up by a stadium light, there is another in front of the house, so the surrounding yards were dimly lit. We had left a bunch of liquor up at the bar in the shed and three of us start walking up there while the others were in the house. When we were about 50 feet away, we see this person-like figure bolt out of the shed, the main door is always open, and run into the trees. And I mean fast. It was maybe 10 feet from that height, yet somehow none of us could see anything but its shape. We naturally thought some dipshits were robbing my shed and we were a bit spooked, but being young redneck boys with an overdeveloped sense of cowboyism, I told one friend to run back to get the others in my gun. Me and the other friend waited under the light. My friend and I saw the figure right away. That whole timber to the west there has very low weed cover and the trees are spread evenly apart which made it easy to watch it. As we strained to keep an eye on it through the dimly lit trees, it started moving around slowly. We watched as it stepped behind a tree and just vanished. The tree wasn't thick, maybe 9 inches in diameter, but the figure stepped behind it on one side and simply didn't appear on the opposite side. Now my friend and I'd adrenaline spiked as we whisper hurriedly things like WTF and did you see that? As we are quizzing each other and panning around to find it, the rest of the group came running up. One friend had the smarts to hop in his car and drive up so his headlights could light up the whole scene. My friend handed me my 22 rifle, and apparently decided to bring all the rest of my guns, two pistols and a shotgun, so now a fairly armed group. We were hicks, but we were nerdy hicks, so I'm sure we looked quite the sight. We all see the thing as it casually yet purposefully steps out from behind a different tree than before. Now everyone is in edge as every signal in my brain screamed alarm something's not right alarm. We all sensed it and saw what we each saw, but no one spoke at that time. We were too fixated and shocked at what we were seeing. Later in the night as we all sat around sharing our perception of what happened, we all said the same things we couldn't comprehend at the time. When it stepped out, it didn't cast a shadow. The headlights and fixed lamp were casting plenty of light into the trees now and the tree shadows and our shadows were there, but not this thing. Its head was narrower and longer than normal. Its arms too. And it was tall, hence the 8 feet tall guy moniker. It moved briskly to another tree and disappeared like before. 
A few moments later, it walked out from behind a different tree 10 feet away in the opposite direction. It was like it teleported. It then repeated this game several more times. All this allowed us to get plenty of eyes on it, but not me or anyone else could describe it. It's like the lights lit up everything around it, but not the thing itself. Except the eyes, we all agreed it had silver eyes but the crazy part? We all only saw the eyes like out of our peripheral, they just weren't there if you looked at it dead on. After several minutes of this, I finally raised my rifle and tried to sound tough, this is private property and we are armed. Come towards us slowly and show yourself or I will shoot. That thing stopped dead in its tracks, turned to face me and studied us for a moment, and then with purpose it extended a leg and stepped behind a tree that couldn't have been four inches wide and vanished. Several, several minutes go by and nothing. We eventually decide to huddle up and go back to the house. The buddy in the car drives down ahead. We made it maybe 20 feet when a friend's GF starts screaming. The thing was following us about 50 feet south of us, hugging the tree line. It moved wrong, like it was moving its body from a pouncing, slightly crouched over posture to a sprint posture all while jogging slowly. It literally made your brain hit the brakes hard as it tried to make sense of the visual input. There's a great book by Stephen King called From a Buick 8 where these cops come across this humanoid creature from another dimension that's so incredibly different from ourselves that their brains can't handle it, and they are overcome with fear so terribly that they beat the creature to death in a fit of insanity and fear and rage. Every time I think back to that deep, instinctual fear that we felt that night and every time I say the way it moved or looked or behaved was just wrong, I think of that scene in that book. Collectively, everyone that had a gun opened fire without a word, it was if we all had the same instinctual response. Now I can't speak for my friends, but I am and have always been a crack shot with a rifle. I was just raised hunting since I could walk, so I was shocked when I watched leaves blown apart and branches snap and dirt kick up as the collective firing of birdshot, 22, 38, and 44 ammo blow everything apart around that thing, but that thing itself never seemed to be hit, I'm going to sum up the rest as it went by in a blur. We all ran for the house when the ammo dried up. Some were already inside, including the dogs who were terrified of the thing. Or maybe they were scared of us, who knows. We huddled in the living room and waited. Soon we heard footsteps clattering across the porch, and I mean clatter as in the thing had nails of some sort, but let me tell you those sounds were strange and unique too. Next we heard it seemingly climbing up the side of the house behind us, click 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 across the roof, and then a thud as it jumped three stories down to the ground. Then rinse and repeat on every side of the house sometimes repeatedly and sometimes with minutes of pauses between. Eventually we escorted each other to the bathroom, and I and a friend saw it through the sliding glass deck doors as it launched itself over the deck railing, a 15 feet drop there, as we walked back from the bathroom. Finally after what felt like an eternity, the thing seemed to stop. Not long after my parents' car turned into our driveway. We all agreed to hightail it to my room BC no way we're trying to explain all of the guns out and what happened all night. As soon as we got to my room, Someone did mention shouldn't we warn them? We all had the feeling they would be okay so we didn't, but looking back telling this as an adult now good god yes we should have warned them. I had a large two-room basement bedroom, it sounds fancier than it was, trust me, so we just got comfortable and turned my TV on. My parents came inside and eventually my mom poked her head in to say goodnight, none the wiser to all that we'd been through. We all tried to sleep soon after that and we all slept like hell, but it didn't bother us anymore that night. Throughout the rest of that year, there were several more credible sightings from everyone in the group. Even a couple more people got pulled into the story as they were with us when we'd see it again. I think about 11 people overall got to clearly see it that year. Nothing to write about because, well, how do I explain this? Have you ever noticed that when people want to ignore something, even something dangerous, they pretend it isn't happening? Like, okay yes we see this thing but there's nothing we can do about it or get closure on anything about it, so what can you do? You just go about your life, and if you happen to see it running towards you and your friend as you walk to the car at night, you both just hurry up, get in, lock the doors and speed off. And go in with your night. Rinse and repeat throughout the year. P.S. Yes, over the years I've tried to find info. The closest thing I've found is Native American and First Nations lore about shadow spirits and shadow people, but they didn't seem to fit just right. And yes, I'm a very skeptical person. I am very married to science and common sense. But that thing, well, my brain just goes I got nothing, you're on your own buddy. Maybe it was interdimensional, or an alien, or a demon, or some spirit. Except none of those answers feel right and most sound crazy as shit to me so I don't know. Even 20 years later, I still struggle with impulsively trying to downplay any of it because I can't explain it rationally. PPS yes, 
I still go into wooded areas at night in other places, I never fear anything happening. I love camping. However, I inherited that same homestead a few years back and I notice I am uneasy as hell being outside at night here. I run a small farm there though so I have to be out after dark. I haven't seen anything yet and I hope I don't. Normally you know when it's around, your anxiety goes from zero to red line the moment you step into the dark and that's how you know it's coming. That hasn't happened yet, but the past few weeks something has been feeling a bit off. I don't carry a gun with me usually. I've convinced myself over the years that it's ultimately benign, so if I see it, I'm going to do my best to either ignore it, or converse with it. God help me. I was walking alone at 3 AM in Madison, Wisconsin and then there was a van broken down on the side of the street by Capital Market. Two big men approached me, crowd me a bit, and asked me if I had any money to help them. Not in a mugging way, but in an a we might mug you type of semi vibe. I was a college kid, literally broke, zero cash just taking a break studying from my fuck sleep schedule. I had nothing, so that's what I tell them. Offered them a cigarette and said I might have some change at home lol. Kinda unintentional badass response looking back sorry fellas. They ask where I live and I tell them it's a few blocks away yet and nope the fuck out of there. The next day I saw their mugshots on the news for mugging an old lady. Close call. Another time in a more rural Wisconsin town I was biking on a trail late at night with my aunt and uncle after a local festival. Pitch black on the trail and out of nowhere these two fucking white, dreadlocked, cracky looking guys hop out from each side of the bushes on either side of the trail and confront us. There are definitely plenty of junkies around our area who would pull this type of stunt. My aunt whipped out a knife and shines her flashlight in their face. I don't think they realized there were three of us and that we had weapons and bikes lol. They just kinda played it off and we kept going. Another close call. Last one I'm not sure counts but I walked to the local park while it was still light out to shoot hoops. I was like 15 to 16 at the time. Anyways I stayed until the sun went down. As the sun was setting I realized there was this windowless van that had parked on the street and been sitting there for a while and the driver had not gotten out. In fact the driver was staring right fucking at me. I didn't want to leave the courts because I'm pretty sure I was about to get abducted. I was so scared. I called my mom to pick me up and when she pulled up the van drove away. Close call. I'm sure I'm forgetting other ones. I used to talk to a lot of homeless people in the middle of the night in Madison and soft shit through that. Also cars driving by multiple times, people following me in Milwaukee, animals, shadowy figures, and the like. Glorious times. Oh boy do I have a story for this. Me and four buddies were walking in our local nature park at round 3 AM. Now, it was the last day of summer before school started up again so we were eager to have one last fun experience before returning. An important part of this story is that we had a friend who had recently recovered from a broken femur, so naturally we were walking a bit slower than usual. We were just about to head into this thick forest area with a small path and we all started to get a little on edge. As we entered the forest we heard this scream like no other I've ever heard before, it gave me goosebumps, even thinking back on it now it is giving me the creeps. I can guarantee you this was not an animal. When we heard this we all started to run at full speed in the opposite direction, our only thoughts were to GTFO. As we were running I heard something running beside us, and it was a fox. Now this thing that screamed could not have been this fox. But the terrifying part about this fox was that he was running right beside us, so whatever that noise came from caused scared him more than five rowdy teenagers running at full speed. When we reached the car we all had a moment of confusion, WTF was that? But then I realized one of us was missing. Fuck. We immediately sprinted back to get our friend, the one with the weak femur was still back there. As we reach towards the spot, we see no sign of our buddy. Then, we hear this little crackling noise, and we see our friend creeping up from the trees. Turns out he hid from the thing since he knew he couldn't run away. Well we grab him and take him back to the car since he was still pretty shook. I wish I can tell you we saw what it was or we went back, but tbh we are all too scared to go back lol, but whatever made that scream and whatever sent that fox running, it wasn't anything like I've ever experienced. I've never been afraid of the dark. Grew up in the countryside, where the nearest streetlight was 10 miles away, so I'm comfortable in dark places, so much so that I often take my dog for a walk at around midnight just because I like the peace and quiet of the night. I live in a city now so something about the dark is just soothing to me. That being said, one of the scariest things I've ever experienced, I genuinely have no explanation for. Living in a city I used to drive out 20 to 30 miles into the country to do some astrophotography. As I'm driving out one night I see this guy walking at the side of the road with no lights, reflectors and a big backpack. Didn't think much of it other than it being a little odd. Five miles later, 
I see the same guy walking again. I haven't changed directions, turned, and I've been doing tilde 50 miles per hour. As I drove past he looked and waved at me. I was pretty spooked but I drove on. I must be imagining things. It can't be the same guy. I get to my field in the middle of nowhere, park up and get the camera out, and turn off all the lights so my eyes adjust to the dark. All is going well, and for 30 minutes I'm content, and starting to relax. Suddenly I hear a rustling near the hedge by the road. Crunching leaves, grass being kicked. It was footsteps. I immediately get a feeling of dread, like I'm in severe danger and something bad was going to happen. I grab my camera, toss it in the car, get in, lock the doors and turn on the headlights. When I turn out of the field, I pass where I heard the noise and saw fresh footprints in the mud but no sign of anyone. I race back home, driving double the speed limit, constantly checking my mirrors for anyone. I park up around the corner and wait in the car with the lights off for 30 minutes, watching. Nothing shows up, I get home, lock all the doors and sleep with a knife under my pillow that night. I honestly don't know what really happened that night but part of me knows that creepy guy I passed on the road twice was in that field. More backpacking than a walk but this fucking terrifies me to this day. Our planned camping spot for the night was full, we'd backpacked all day to get to that location and there wasn't anywhere close to set up our tents. We called our guy on the outside to come pick us up as it was getting late, we didn't have anywhere to set up camp, and a storm was approaching. We hiked to the nearest exit point on the trail, met our pickup guy, and he drove us a few miles to the nearest campsite we were familiar with that we could basically drive up to. Long logging path pretty deep in the mountains that we had hiked to in previous years, so we were kind of familiar with the area. Anyways, we hop out of the van and it's pitch black out. No moon, it's April in the mountains and still pretty chilly. We're cold, hungry, and exhausted. That's when we notice this motherfucker staring at us from behind a tree. I know this sounds like a no-sleep story but it's 100% true and probably the most scared I've ever been. We notice this guy, no headlamp, no equipment, no backpack, just standing there. One of our group, former marine, yells at him to come out and explain what his deal is. This guy walks a few feet out from behind the tree and we all shine our lights on him, and I shit you not, this dude's white t-shirt is covered in what looks like blood smears. He's pretty rough looking, long hair, long beard, crazy eyes, and he was wearing a bloody t-shirt and shorts in 35 degree weather at night. We're all pretty freaked out, and this is a pretty experienced group of hikers who've seen some shit. We ask this guy what his deal is and he says we can't camp here. We tell him that that's exactly what we plan to do, and he says I don't think that's a good idea for any of you. We kind of turn to discuss as a group and when we look back he's hidden back behind the tree. As a group we basically decided none of us were getting any sleep that night if we stayed here, so we packed up the van and left. As we were pulling out, this guy pulled out one of those red filtered flashlights and ran after our van. I'm not kidding, he followed us for at least a quarter mile on foot. He was fast as fuck. We passed a park ranger on the road and flagged him down to tell him how weird that dude was acting, and he said he'd go investigate. I didn't hear anything about it again for five years. For the longest time I thought he was probably some pot farmer who had a nearby plot, or a moonshiner who was just living in the woods and didn't want us near his still. People hunt all the time out there, which would maybe explain the blood a little bit, but I was recently at an event with some of those guys again for the first time in years and that creepy dude from the woods got brought up. One of them who still lives nearby broke out his phone and said I forgot to tell you guys, I saw him again. Pulls up a news article and there he was. So obviously the same guy. He'd been arrested for murdering some poor girl on the trail. Timelines didn't match up, so I fully believe we saw this guy shortly after he'd murdered someone else. He hasn't been charged with anything else as far as I'm aware. I'm not backpacking without a gun anymore. During winter in a rural no-cell service kind of area. Completely dark, no street lights nor anyone in sight. Temperatures were around 20 and it was snowing. I was walking my dog with a flashlight. Then I heard someone start screaming bloody murder. Flight or fight kicked in, it truly sounded like someone was being stabbed to death for what seemed like forever. I chose to find out what the hell was going on. What I found instead was beyond anything I expected. He was a five-year-old boy wandering down the road all alone. All he was wearing were light flannel pants and a thin t-shirt. No shoes or hat. And screaming so loudly it echoed through the hills. I dropped my dog's leash and walked up to him slowly, gently and repeatedly telling him that I'm a mom and that he's going to be okay. I wrapped him into my arms and carried him to a neighbor's home to warm him by the fire and call for help. When I was maybe 7 or 8 years old I was going to my friend's house to see if he would come out and play. 
He lived the next street over so it was literally a five minute walk from my house. I remember having a weird feeling that someone was behind me and when I looked behind there was a guy maybe in his 20s walking a few paces behind. I started walking faster and faster but so did he. I began to panic but knew that when I got to my friend's house I should be okay. I rang the doorbell and my friend answered and told him I thought someone was following me. We could see the guy's feet on the far side of a bush across the road. He was standing there waiting. My friend said he couldn't come out as his parents weren't home which meant I had to walk back by myself to my own house. I tried to catch the guy off guard and began to sprint down the street as fast as I could. I looked behind and could see him running after me and gaining on me fast. As I rounded the corner onto my street I could see my dad up ahead washing his car and I began to shout at him. He couldn't really hear me because of how far away but he eventually saw me and came towards me. I told him somebody was chasing me and when we looked back down the road there was nobody there. I don't think he really believed me, just thought I was up to some 8 year old bullshit. So yeah that was a crazy day. This was a few years ago when I was in high school. I used to take night walks all the time with my dad during the summer because he's a teacher and we both love staying up late. My town is a safe, fairly small town, so we don't worry too much. One time, we were heading towards home on one of the main roads in town. Our house was mostly a straight shot from there, save for a couple of turns on some back roads closer to home. We walked past here countless times. As we passed one of the storefronts, we saw a man and a woman standing together outside on the sidewalk. It's not too unusual to see people enjoying the night air in the summer, so we didn't think too much of it. They had a stroller nearby, so I assumed that they lived in the apartment above the store and had taken out their baby for some fresh air to soothe them. Now, generally I'm a pretty nervous person, so I try to avoid contact whenever we pass people. I'm minding my own business as we walk past, but I happen to glance over at the woman who had a bundle in her arms. I wanted to take a peek at the baby, but that's when I had a very slow, creeping realization. It wasn't a baby in her arms. It was a baby doll. Not one of those realistic ones that people sometimes have, either. It was just a regular plastic baby doll from the toy aisle. It was then that I noticed that as the woman was holding it, the man was running what looked like a UV light over the doll's forehead. My dad and I said nothing, but we immediately crossed the street and took a different route home. I have no idea what those people were doing with that doll that night, but I still think about it sometimes. It was easily the weirdest thing I've ever seen in town. This was actually just last month. It was around 11 PM and I was at the beach with my friend Mia, her boyfriend, and two other guys. We were just hanging out on some rocks on the cliff overlooking the water when Mia and I swore we heard crying in the wind. The thing was, we had been there for a while and made sure the area was empty, so the boys decided to go check it out. They climbed further down the rocks laughing, thinking it was probably an animal or our imagination. Less than five minutes later, all three of the guys came scrambling back up, dead serious. Mia's boyfriend grabbed her while one of the other guys grabbed me and we found ourselves climbing up and running back to the car as fast as we could against the wind. Turns out they had seen a figure standing at the base of the rocks facing the water, just staring and crying. What freaked us out so badly was that there was only one way down to that spot, and we had been blocking the path, so we would have known if anyone went down. Additionally, we had been absolutely sure that there wasn't a single other person there when we arrived. We're still not sure how that person appeared there, but we haven't been back past dark. I once took my dog on a walk down a well-known path through the woods at 10 PM. I went late so we wouldn't run into anybody and had success a handful of times before. One night we were about a mile in, and my dog stops in her tracks. She's a scaredy cat so I didn't think much of it. In the illumination of my red headlamp, I saw movement of what looked like a person about 10 feet in front of me. I kept walking and sure enough, there was a person. An old lady wearing sweatpants and a windbreaker was sitting on the ground, rocking back and forth muttering to herself and cradling what looked like a towel. I thought it was pretty weird, but didn't think much else. My dog and I went along for a little less than a mile to our turnaround point and began walking back. Within a minute there was this same woman, on the opposite side of the trail doing the same thing. At this point I realized she had been following us since we passed her the first time. At this point my dog and I are just short of 2 miles in on this trail, and I always brought my handgun with me so I felt fairly safe, but still. There was something in the back of my mind that was very on edge about this whole situation. I kept looking over my shoulder on the walk back, and never saw her, but I could hear her. She never came close to us and never spoke to me. I made it back to my car and got the fuck out of there. I never went back to that trail when it was dark out. I lived in southern Missouri for a while when I was a young teenager, weird shit, very weird shit. 
I lived in a village with less than 100 people in it, closest semi-large town was couple miles away with 10,000 people. Obviously living in the boonies it seemed pretty safe to be walking around, so long as you were armed, because wild animals aren't fun. So there was this path cleared out near my house, it was really easy to get lost in and the path was overgrown in places, nothing paves. I went walking at night one time about 1 or 2 am, couldn't have been older than 13 or 14 with a pocket knife, a dying flashlight, and a pack of half-crushed Marlboro Reds. So I'm wandering around these trails, my flashlight is dimming out so I decide I want to head home. The light goes out. While I'm standing at a fork in the path, I went left. It seemed like a good choice at the time. I keep walking down for about 10 minutes and I hear like some sort of screech singing and in the distance and I start noticing smoke through the thick foliage. I walk down a bit more off the path behind a tree and see about 10 to 20 adults standing around a decent sized fire. They're all holding hands and singing and there's all kinds of weird symbols pressed into the dirt. There was a hunting rifle and some wooden stakes. I think they were stakes, leaned up against a tree across the clearing. I nope the fuck out of there as quietly and quickly as possible, pocket knife in hand. I'm smacking my flashlight until it flickers on and hauling my scrawny ass home. It looked like something straight out of a horror film. Went back with a few friends the next day and there were the remains of a fire, but no symbols, it had rained a bit before we went. I wish I could have gotten some pictures, safe to say I never went down that path alone again, especially at night. I used to work closing shift at a restaurant years ago. I didn't have a license at the time so pretty much walked everywhere. The walk home after work usually took about 45 minutes as I lived a bit out of town. That's if I stayed on the roads, but there was a short, but steep section of bushland you could cut through that would cut around 15 minutes off the trip. It was pretty rough to get through, completely unlit and creepy as hell but some nights I just needed to cut that trip home a bit shorter. One night I'm heading gone. Must have been around 12 AM. It was the middle of winter, cold as hell. Like, 0 degrees Celsius. I wasn't dressed for it and wanted to get home quick so I took the shortcut. For some reason that night I start getting extra creeped out, so I'm really legging it through this bush land. I finally see the street lights ahead as I emerge from the trees and back into the suburban street. I feel kinda relieved, catch my breath and start back on the steady pace home but as I pass the very first house on the right I see him. There's a guy, kneeling, behind a small bush in the front yard, completely naked with his hands over his junk. Just, staring at me, wide-eyed. I just froze dead still. It seemed like ages but it was probably only a second before I tried to swallow but was so terrified I couldn't and kinda choked slash coughed. The sound broke the standstill and this guy just jumps up laughing hysterically and fence jumps into the next house's backyard. I can hear him crashing through bushes and climbing more fences in the dark, and then, nothing. Just absolute, middle of the night, middle of winter, middle of now where silence. I noped out of there real fast. I moved, unrelated, a few months later but I never walked through there again. Not walking, instead I was driving a motorcycle. It was around 9 pm, I was passing a rural area with very sparse population. The road I was traveling was a single lane barely enough for a truck to pass through. It so happened that I saw a child not more than 12 to 13 years old. He was in muddied clothes all alone by himself in the middle of nowhere. I passed by thinking I should stop to check on the kid, he might be in need of some help. I turned to look back while still driving, and I found him running behind me almost at my speed. That fucking kid was running at a speed of around 80 kmps towards me. I almost shat my pants. I sped my bike up trying to outrun him. I was driving at almost 120 kmph, the road was not suitable for that speed. But I was more than happy to die in a crash than being caught by the kid. I was barely able to think. I pulled my phone and called my sister, somehow managing my phone and my bike at the same time. I told her where I was and I needed help as I was being chased by a ghost. I just kept driving. The chase continued for almost 8-10 kms. The road connected to the highway. And at that time the kid suddenly disappeared. After driving for another 10 kilometers at maximum speed my bike or my skills allowed, I stopped, had some water and called my sister again. I could barely sleep for a few days as I could vividly remember the boy. I don't know what I saw as I being a complete atheist, do not believe in God or ghost. I still don't. Since childhood I was never afraid of strolling in the dark or ghost but that event was batshit crazy. I am a very skeptical person when it comes to ghosts, but I cannot for the life of me explain this one. So I'm walking along a river in our town at about 1 or 2 AM. I can hear footsteps like him being followed, but when I turn around no one is there. The way this place is laid out there's nowhere for anyone to hide. 
So I'm getting a little bit freaked out and just as I'm about to cut my walk short, a very tall figure just, appears in my peripheral vision. No one walked up to me, it was just there. It was all in silhouette. And when I say next to me, I mean two fucking feet or less from me. And like I said, there's nowhere to hide. So I have no idea where this thing came from, like I said this thing just popped out of nowhere, or why it just stood that close to me out in the open. As soon as I see this thing I freeze. I don't look at it and it never moves. Whether from panic or something else my vision just gets distorted. Tunnel vision, and my vision just warping like a bad drug trip. My hearing just goes dead silent as well, I can't hear anything whether it be my own breathing, bugs at night or the river running. All this is happening while whatever this thing is is still in my peripheral vision. Then as suddenly as it started, it stopped. The figure was gone, like it just popped out of existence. My vision went back to normal and I could hear again. I don't know how long I stood there like that, but as soon as it stopped I ran home, cutting through several backyards. I didn't sleep that night and it took me a while to go back to walking at night again. I still don't walk that river though, at least not alone. Either way, it hasn't happened since. I live in a smallish forest town right next to a mountain, and there's a park with a popular hiking trail that goes in a two-mile loop right at the base of the mountain. A couple years ago, I would regularly walk the trail at night, and because I've heard of both people and animals going after hikers, I always made sure to carry my phone, flashlight, and concealed pistol. One night I was walking the loop at about 9.30, and just as I passed the one and a half mile marker, I heard what sounded like pain grunting coming from up ahead. As a criminal justice student who was studying to be a cop at the time, I immediately, and stupidly, started running toward it, thinking someone was injured or in trouble. I kept my light on the path as I was running, but at a certain point, even though I didn't see anything, I got a bad feeling. I stopped dead in my tracks, shined my light around, and saw two fully grown black bears about 20 feet away from me, just off the path. They were facing away from me, apparently eating bugs off of rocks they'd kicked over, which, fun fact, comprises the majority of their diet in my area. As soon as they noticed the light, they turned around, saw me, panicked, and ran back out into the forest. I count myself extremely lucky. Black bears aren't super territorial, nothing like grizzlies, at least, but they've been known to attack when they feel threatened or scared, and I doubt my little 9mm subcompact would have done much to stop two 200 pounds bears. I called the local sheriff's office to let them know that there were bears in a public park, and just finished my walk very carefully. The adrenaline didn't wear off until I got back to my truck. I still go out at night every once in a while, I luckily haven't experienced anything like this since. Back when I was like 16 and 17, I would regularly go out and just walk at night. My parents were alright with it and I just liked to be to myself it was relaxing. I pretty much only did it on the weekends though because of school and stuff. I remember it was a Friday night at like 11 o'clock. There was a park that I would go to and sit down at sometimes. This night I chose to do that. It was October so decently cold out and the park had a dense forest behind it, but luckily it was a decently sized park. So as I was sitting on the bench I had my headphones on, only one though, and I was texting my girlfriend. When I heard this sound from behind me. It was so quiet that if the sound in my headphones was up even one more bar I probably wouldn't have heard it. It didn't even look behind me because at first I didn't know where it had came from until later. I just looked up and scanned the surroundings before getting occupied texting again. After like 6 minutes I remembered the sounds I had heard and just so happened to look behind me. In the forest I could barely see anything but what I could see was the outline of a person. A person just standing there. It was so dark I couldn't tell you the race, age, even gender of this person but there was somebody there. And they were standing in an exaggerated pose. Like you know the T-pose rendering video game characters will have? Imagine that but their arms weren't all the way out just outward a little, and they were standing with their legs spread apart some. I just sat there dumbfounded staring at this person who was completely still, not making one noise or moving at all. I stood up and began the walk back in the direction of my house. As I was like 40 feet from where I was sitting, I looked back and the same person was now standing where I was just sitting in that same exaggerated pose. It was like someone picked him up and put him back down the exact same position. I didn't even hear him move but I still had a headphone over one ear so that probably why. It was a man who was just staring dead at me with a blank face, and needless to say I hightailed it out of there. Never went on night walks again after that. I was walking on a road with no sidewalk around 4 am because I'd taken the wrong bus. I got off at the stop closest I could, and struck down a main road. I had gone about half a mile when I got near freeway overpass, and I noticed a car coming towards me. There was nothing assuming about the car, it was a light-colored older Honda. 
but it slowed down as it approached me, and a man rolled down his window as he came to a stop not far from me. Yes maybe what I was stupid out there so late, and I explained my situation. It seems that he took pity on me, and he offered me a ride. Being rather inebriated, kind of a stubborn, and kind of personally against handouts, to him no, and kept walking. He then pulled off, turned around so he was going the same direction, and rolled his other window down and offered again. Now my suspicion was piqued. He was being unnecessarily nice and that usually has strings attached, and he was also somewhat moved forceful in his speech. So I told him no more forcefully this time and I crossed the road to give me some distance and kept walking home as he took off in a huff. It was a very odd encounter, but I never really thought a lot about it until probably about a year later. My live-in girlfriend and I were having problems, to put it lightly. We had been yelling at each other all evening, and our argument lasted well into the night. Our argument spilled out into the sidewalk and a bit down the street, and after we had finished exploding on each other she left me sitting on a bench and started walking back to our apartment. And as she was walking back to our apartment, a light-colored Honda rolled up next to her. It took me a minute to realize what was happening, but I walked after her. And as I got closer to the car it took off in a hurry. And I talked to my girlfriend, and she basically told me the same kind of scenario that I had gone through almost a year before. This guy was being unnecessarily nice, and offering to give my girlfriend a ride somewhere, got scared off when he saw me walking up. Sure he was innocuous, sure he wasn't being violent but to see him twice doing the exact same thing so insistently makes me wonder if he might have had more sinister motives than what he let on. Maybe I'm just suspicious, maybe I'm just paranoid, but part of me believes that we encountered a possible monster that night. A friend and I went cruising into the country out of town about 10 miles. It's around 11 p.m. and it's a full moon. Buddy went to pull over on the shoulder and didn't realize the grass was cut evenly with the road but the ditch was a 45 degree grade. Truck goes kitty wampas and almost rolls. After trying to unfuck the truck we both exit out the driver's door and start the long walk back into town to get help getting out of the ditch. We start talking about this and that as we walk and start drinking the beers we brought with. About an hour into our trudge I get a weird feeling of being watched. I stopped and looked to my side and there's a shimmering massive shape looking back at me. It was a black bull right at the barbed wire fence 12 feet from me staring me down. Once we yelled at him to try and spook him and he didn't flinch we started walking again, trying to ignore him away. He followed us, never leaving our side and barely making a sound as he walked. I wondered how long he's been following us. How big is the property he's on? I also wondered why his owner let him keep his horns and if the bull knew he could easily jump the fence. The longer he followed us the more I thought about the giant black bull hopping the fence and goring the both of us then leaving us for dead. Would anyone find us in time? It was a desolate area and we hadn't seen headlights in any direction so far. We finally hit the end of the bull's domain. He stood in the corner of the fencing watching us walk until we were far enough away that we were unable to see if he was still there. I kept thinking he was going to come charging from behind us, our only warning being the noise of loose gravel being flung from his hooves as he went from walking silently to a full sprint bearing down on us to close the gap. I've never looked over my shoulder as many times in a row as I did that night. I kept at it until we finally hit the outskirts of town and had street lights to illuminate our path home. I was working at a summer camp in the hill country of Texas a few years back. The staff cabin, for those not staying with the campers, was located a good 15 to 20 minute walk away from the campers buildings, and the trail we'd take went through a small gully and up a pretty steep hill before it leveled out. No lights, and mostly no pavement. I was working late getting things ready for the going away party the next day and I was alone because the flu had put half the counselors on their ass that day. Once I was done I started to walk back as twilight faded into blackness. I had gotten up the hill to the cabin about halfway before I got the feeling I wasn't alone. My feet had been making a lot of noise on the rocky trail so it took a second to register what sounded like something moving slowly in the brush behind me. I swung my cheap headlamp around frantically trying to figure out what was there. About 40 feet down the path behind me in the bushes to the right of the trail were a pair of glowing, wide set green eyes. They were about two feet off the ground, not moving. My lamp was too dim to detect anything else through the brush so I had no clue what type of creature it was. After a second the eyes lowered a foot, still fixed on me. I was terrified. I froze for a second or two before letting out a guttural bark in an effort to scare it off. It didn't move. I started to back away slowly, repeating the bark. I went up the trail like that, headlamp fixed on the eyes. The eyes didn't move. As soon as I reached the flat part I sprinted for the nearest building, screaming my ass off. I made it inside to a lot of freaked out coworkers who looked out the window, but didn't see anything. 
To this day I have no clue what it was, but I know it was big and it scared me real good. This is for me because it happened like 3 weeks ago. I enjoy going for hikes at night because you get to see more wildlife. I went out to a local river that has a trail that closely follows alongside it like I do frequently and was lucky enough to see lots of frogs and in a few snakes that night. I made it about half a mile down the main trail when I heard a relatively loud noise ahead of me and as I shone my flashlight in the direction I just caught a glimpse of a large hairy leg tucking behind a rather large tree about 60 to 70 feet ahead of me. Now this was far enough away that it didn't frighten me but close enough with my flashlight that I could distinctly make out long brown and black fur that seemed to be matted. Mind you this was dark and it happened in a split second but that's what my mind registered. It was odd because I live in North Carolina and the only thing that would have a fur profile such as that which was consistent with the size of the leg would be a black bear. Though black bears are rarely if ever brown that's the explanation my mind went with. So I casually turn around on the narrow trail deciding it was best not to tempt a bear at night. I'd walked probably 200 yards roughly when I heard a similar noise as before again in front of me so I shine my light in the direction and there's another large tree this time with what appears to be a very large and long hairy arm reaching around the tree as if something were gripping it to peer from around the other side. I didn't notice anything other than this arm maybe 30 feet ahead of me and within a few seconds of shining my light on it the arm is pulled out of sight slowly behind the tree. Mind you this is probably 7 feet up the tree, I'm 5 apostrophe 10, and it was well above my eye level. So at this point I kind of panic and begin to sprint down the trail trying my best to keep my flashing on the same side where I saw this. I make it a few hundred yards and realize I shouldn't be running if it is a bear but at this point I'm also considering it's someone in a costume messing with me. So I stop to catch my breath and kneel down on the trail for a moment I draw my firearm from its holster, I always carry on night hikes, and turn the light on my gun on as well using it to look one way down the trail and the flashlight to look the other. I sit for a few moments heart pounding breathing heavy and trying my best to rationalize what just happened. I reaffirm my previous conclusion that it's either a bear that was climbing the tree or a person messing with me and that my best course of action is to slowly walk forward with both lights on staying vigilant and reaching my vehicle. So I proceed. Again I make it a little ways down the trail and I hear a large tree branch snap as if something had stepped on it in the underbrush. I shine my light and sure enough there appears to be a portion of arm sticking out behind a large tree ahead of me this time more like an elbow shaped sort or like this greater than and after a few brief seconds it retreats the arm behind the tree approximately the same height as before. My heart starts pounding even harder and I pick up the pace as I'm getting closer to my car. I nervously cross the two rather wide creeks along the trail as I'm nearing the entrance of the trailhead. Suddenly I hear a louder noise like the first time and shine my light ahead of me and off near another large tree I again see a portion of arm like before this time sticking out a bit further almost revealing a shoulder if I had to guess but can't be sure. This time almost immediately as I shine my light on that area it disappeared behind the tree. I'm absolutely terrified and drenched in sweat at this point so I decide to put away my flashlight and fix my firearm and its light on the location gripping it with both hands prepared to shoot and slowly inch my way along the path drawn up while I reach my vehicle. At this point I'm literally 100 to 150 yards from my vehicle and as I climb the small hill leading to my vehicle I consider popping off a few rounds to see if I can scare whatever this thing is out of hiding but my first thought after that was well what if it is a person messing with me. So I choose not to. I at this point have nearly made a full 360 degree circle around the tree and haven't seen a single sign of anything when I reach my vehicle. I hop in and take off down the road my mind racing trying to comprehend what had happened.